coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Technom introduces the P2010 TDI, Boeing resumes 737 MAX production, and B29 Dock, Hangar, Education, and Visitor Center will reopen soon. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. Technom has introduced their newest airframe with an aero diesel engine and a type certificate expected by July, the P2010 TDI. Burning just 5.2 US gallons per hour, the aircraft takes advantage of the high wing configuration with three access doors plus another dedicated for the baggage compartment. It can also cover 1,000 nautical miles on a full tank of 63 gallons. The P2010 TDI role is to fill a gap in customer choices as they can now order the 2010 with three different power plants and three different fuel capabilities. Automotive unleaded. Av gas on the most powerful 215 horsepower variant and from now on jet and diesel. Flight safety is enhanced by the electrically adjustable height, 26G capable crash worthy seats, while cockpit chores are handled by a G1000 NXI glass cockpit cockpit and GFC 700 autopilot, which is integrated with the Continental CD-170 engine. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at SwiftFuelsAvgas.com. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer. Offering excellent fuel efficiency and a durable composite design, the Alpha Trainer can be operated from virtually anywhere. Whether you're a first-time aircraft owner, assembling a fleet, or running a flight school. The Light Sport Alpha Trainer from Pipistrel is a dynamic option. Learn more about what the Pipistrel Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrel-usa.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back, it's time for today's trip around the patch. Gamma released its report of general aviation aircraft shipments and billings for the first quarter of 2020. Piston, turboprop, business jet and rotorcraft deliveries declined across all segments during the first quarter of 2020, as compared to the first quarter of 2019. Piston airplane deliveries declined 11.7% with 219 units. Turboprop airplane deliveries declined 41.8% with 71 units. And business jet deliveries declined 19.1% with 114 units. The 2020 Mid-South Air Show, scheduled to take place June 20th and 21st, has been canceled in an attempt to slow the spread of coronavirus. The event, which takes place at the Millington Memphis Airport, was set to feature the Blue Angels, aerobatic performances, static display aircraft, and local emergency response helicopters. Refunds will be given to anyone who has already purchased a ticket, and organizers say they're looking forward to planning the 2021 Mid-South Air Show. Alpha has called on the FCC to reconsider a recent decision that threatens the safe operation of GPS aviation communication, navigation, and surveillance services. In its petition for reconsideration, Alpha called the Commission's Legato Network's decision arbitrary, irrational, and unsupported on any logical basis by the record. The organization states they're concerned the Commission did not fully comprehend the safety performance levels required to ensure safe operations of GPS aviation communication, navigation and surveillance services, or threat of adverse operational impacts from Legato's proposed service. As part of the Air Force's ongoing effort to encourage a more diverse pool of applicants to pursue careers in aviation, the minimum height requirement for officer applicants who wish to fly has been removed. While still preserving safety of flight, the policy adjustment prevents initial applicants who are below 64 inches or above 77 inches in height from requiring an accessions waiver. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. 
And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Well, hello, fellow flight instructor. You know, it's been over a month now since we all started working and studying from home, and we hope we'll all be able to get back in the cockpit soon. But until then, King Schools is offering an even better deal on our flight instructor refresher courses. Right now, you can get our FERC for only $93. Plus, you get our King Schools Aviation eLibrary free with your FERC purchase. Use the code HOME when you order. Boeing has resumed production of the 737 MAX at the company's Renton, Washington factory. The 737 program began building airplanes at a low rate as it implements more than a dozen initiatives focused on enhancing workplace safety and product quality. During the temporary suspension of production that began in January, mechanics and engineers collaborated to refine the standardized work packages in each position of the factory. New kitting processes will also ensure that employees have everything they need at their fingertips to build the airplane. The steps we've taken in the factory will help drive our goal of 100% quality for our customers while supporting our ongoing commitment to workplace safety, said Scott Stalker, Vice President of 737 Manufacturing. The 737 program will gradually ramp up production this year. After more than two months of being closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the B-29 Dock Hangar Education and Visitor Center will reopen to the public June 2nd. The facility, located in Wichita, has been closed since March. The process of reopening the hangar to the public is the first step in a phased approach to return to full operations for B-29 Dock. The phase will include an initial return to full operations for the Dock team, with the resumption of B-29 Dock flight experience rides and a modified 2020 tour schedule, which Dock's friends expect to be implemented by mid to late June, pending adherence to the Kansas Ad Astra reopening plan as announced by the state of Kansas and supported by local health officials in Wichita. And that wraps up our week, everyone. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. To stay up to date on the latest aviation and aerospace news this weekend, head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you Monday.